بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان قرآن کی اسٹڈیز ٹوڈیز اور ٹاپک از الحزاب وچ از دا تھرٹی تھرڈ سرمن آف گاڈ اینڈ اٹس مین ٹاپک از دا پرسنالٹی آف پروفٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ ہز فیملی اینڈ وٹ دا کرائسس ہیپن to the prophet and his family all these details is there so this is very interested case studies and all this is that how we should improve our personality in the attitude based of the prophet we should study and how we should improve about ourselves so just overall view of this is that from eight sentences the personality of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what crises happened and then 9 to 27 sentences are about trench war which was the biggest crisis for all the companions radiyallahu anhu and during this trench war hypocrites also conducted huge false propaganda so god explain that what are their errors in that then 28 to 39 sentences again the crisis of the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then from the answer is 40 to 52 sentences are that now this finish of prophethood is closed at the time of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and now there will be no prophet after that time and then god explained the responsibility of the last prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about him then from 53 to 65 sentences again god explained the crisis management about the family that how they should manage the crisis how they should do and also the muslim ladies at that time this hypocrites were planning to conduct harassment about muslim ladies so at that time god explained that how they should manage and then ask the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam government to take action about punishment of such hypocrites who do this harassment and rap who had done so and then the last sentences are the result of covenant between allah and human persons and based on that how god will give benefit to the right persons and what will be the punishment of wrong persons so this is the overall view of this sermon so we'll start today and it will take around 2 to 3 lectures we'll be able to finish this one <clears throat> so we start it بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah the most gracious the ever merciful يا أيها النبي اتق الله ولا تطع الكافرين والمنافقين إن الله كان عليما حكيما واتبع واتبع ما يوحى إليك من ربك إن الله كان بما تعملون خبيرا وتوكل على الله وكفى بالله wakila o prophet take care of god and there is no need to think about comments of disbelievers and hypocrites because there is no doubt that allah is all knowing and all wise follow what is being revealed to you in this quran by your lord in reality allah is aware of all that you are doing trust allah because 
God is sufficient for you. So here actually the main topic is the crisis which was conducted to the prophet and his family and companions as well. So God explained that how you should manage the crisis. Why this crisis happened? Because God has established this life is for a test, for an exam. And as an exam, such practical crisis also happen. And God explained that how you should manage the crisis. So this is the main topic. So continuously, you will see that what especially about the personality of the Prophet Sallallahu and about their about his family how it happens god will explain the law about family how they should manage god explain ma ja'alallahu li rajulin min qalb qalbaini fi jawfi wa ma ja'ala azwajakum allayi tuzahiruna minhunna ummahatikum wa ma ja'ala أدعياءكم أبناءكم ذلكم قولكم بأفواهكم والله يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل أدعوهم لآبائهم هو أقسط عند الله فإن لم تعلموا آباءهم وإخوانكم في الدين في الدين ومواليكم وليس عليكم جناع فيما أخطأتم به ولكن ما تعمدت قلوبكم وكان الله غفور رحيم الله has not placed two hearts in the chest of any person so that he should simultaneously simultaneously believe in two contradictory things consequently Allah neither has considered your mother when you assume wives with zihar similar similarly you adopted sons as your own sons but they are not your real sons all these are just your sentences by mouths only but Allah says the truth and it is he alone who shows the right path understood that the adopted sons must be considered as their real fathers it is this which is more just in the sight of Allah then if you don't know their fathers they are just your religious brothers and allies only the mistake you have committed in this matter you will not be held answerable for it but there definitely in accountability on your heart's intent but god is forgiving and ever merciful so it was a sort of two mistakes happened in this culture of Arabs one thing is Zihar and second error was adopted sons so what was Zihar Zihar was that whenever a man and ladies husband and wife had some any dispute at that time husband assumed that now in future this lady will be my mother they assume it and in future it, it means that it was in reality it was his wife but they assume no now in future this lady will be my mother so God explained that this was just a mistake and it was just these are your 
sentences of your mouth so for god it is nothing so you should now improve your culture <clears throat> so right now you will think that why god has explained that in the quran because at the time when the quran was revealed such mistakes were there <clears throat> so for us it is now definitely we don't take it but if we take any similar errors will create in our culture so we should now get rid of it so this is the main answer second <clears throat> mistake was that people when assumed a person as a son adopted son so they assume that now it adopted son will be equal same like the real son so god explained that no take such mistakes you have to explain that child that who is the real father of that child because in future it will result huge psychological crisis of the son when he will mature his mind then he will he would understood that now who is the real father and this is just the adopted father so this will result psychological crisis about this children <clears throat> that's why god has explained that you should clearly explain the child that who are the real father and i am just your adopted father and it has no legal action as a result of that so this child will be a religious brother and l is only that's it its status is this one this will never become <clears throat> the similar real son no he will be the son of the real father so this god has explained that in your culture such errors you have to improve it and similarly based on these things this rule you should understood that in our culture whatever mistakes appear in our culture how we should have to avoid in future <clears throat> then god further explain about an nabiyyu ula bil mu'minina min anfusihim wa azwajuhu ummahatuhum واولو الارحام بعضهم اولى ببعض في كتاب الله من المؤمنين والمهاجرين الا ان تفعلوا الى اوليائكم معروفا كان ذلك في في الكتاب مستورا واذ اخذنا من النبيين ميثاقهم ومنك ومن نوح وإبراهيم وموسى وعيسى ابن مريم وأخذنا منهم ميثاقا غليظا ليسأل الصادقين عن صدقهم وأعد للكافرين عذابا أليما on the same principle the right of the prophet is more than the personality of faithful persons and prophet's wives are their mothers but blood relations have more rights on one another in the law of allah all other believers and immigrants except if you want to do some kindness to those who are related to you this is written in precisely in this book of quran <clears throat> o prophet remember when from all the prophets we took their pledge and from you also for example in nu ibrahim 
Moses and Jesus, the son of Mary as well, we took a very firm pledge from them that they must faithfully deliver our message. Therefore, Allah will ask the upright about their uprightness. As a result of that, the disbelievers and hypocrites will be asked <coughs> about their <coughs> disbelief so that Allah will prepare a painful torment to them. So here, <coughs> you can understood the situation that this was a mistake. Happen. God has explained that all persons who are they must consider that your prophet is more important to you instead of your own personality your prophet is more important and the prophet is like a psychologically father of all the Muslims. Similarly, the wives of the Prophet, they are the mothers. And God has explained that similarly, all the Prophets, God has explained to them that they should take care of it because all the prophets must follow according to the message of God. So all the prophets will, would follow according to it. And each prophet will help other prophet if they are at the same times, like at the time of Prophet John and Jesus. Both of them happened at the same time, so they helped each other. And for the future, they also explained that who will be the next prophet. And in this sermon also you will find that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final prophet because the prophethood will finish as a time of Prophet Muhammad So this God has explained the scenario. So this is explained. Then God discuss about this trench war. <clears throat> because this was the biggest crisis of the Prophet and companions. You can think about it that people who were infidels in different tribes, they, they become together and their objective was to attack Medina, the city of the Prophet and their objective was to kill the Prophet and the companions. You can think that for all these tribes, military, they had 30,000 soldiers. And you compare that the Prophet ﷺ and his companions, their soldiers number was only 3,000. So their planning of the tribal leaders wanted to just to kill all the prophet and the companions, everyone. So it became a big, biggest crisis of Medina. So God has explained to all the companions that how you should manage such crisis. So this is the main topic is crisis. So you will now continuously see at the same time hypocrites were continued this psychological war through false propaganda they were doing so. So now we understood that in the Quran God has explained 
that war, how they should manage this these crises. Ya ayu al-ladina manuskuru ni'mat Allahi alaykum iz ja'atkum junudun fa arsalna alayhim rihan wa junudan lam tarawha wa kana Allahu bima ta'maluna basira iz ja'awukum min fawqikum wa min asfala minkum wa iz zaghatil absaru wa balaghatil qulubul حناجرا وتظنون بالله الظنون هنالك ابتلي هنالك هنالك ابتلي المؤمنون وزلزل زلزالا شديدا بليورز تي نو هي تو هايپوكرايتس الله از سفيشنت فور يو اند ريمبر الله فيفر اون يو وين armies one after the other launched and on slot on on you they came we sent upon them a storm so that these armies you did not see god continues to observe whatever you do it recall when they attacked you in front and below below sight when your eyes had lost focus because of fear and hearts were scared still stiff you were thinking about ideas about god at that time the believers were put to test and were badly shaken so here we can understood that for such crises why such happen in this life because this is just to test the quality of our faith and quality of our ethics this is the test this happen the life so at the time of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this happen that around 30000 soldiers came to madina and the old companions who had conducted training with the prophet they had no problem but for the new muslims they had such attitude because they had you can god has explained the situation their eyes happened in that way and their hearts were scared stiff why due to risk management because right now they were expecting that these 30000 soldiers will crash all the city of madina they will do it so they was thinking it it's better that let me explain that how such happened in the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his prophethood started at 609 ce and 609 to 622 ce period he conducted the quran explained to all the people of makka and also he conducted to different tribes but during these around 12 13 years they did not understood properly but some of them which were some um, hundreds persons who understood it and they believed with the quran and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is during the life of prophet at makkah then at 622 god give the prophet this independent government in madina so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam conducted immigration from makka he go to madina which become an independent city was established this was small city just within a one city this country happened 
and from here this hijri calendar started first hijri which is equal to 622 ce now you if you have already studied my previous lectures you have studied that in two years prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam established the government and conducted preaching to different tribes in madina and majority of them they believed after some times and many persons of different tribes who believed it so gave instructed them that go to madina conduct this immigration go to madina because now this is an independent government is available there because right now persecution was conducted in different tribes so that's why majority of believers they conducted immigration and go to madina but crisis started the first biggest war happened in badr when from makkah people they tried to attack madina but at the place of badr you might have studied already in this al bakara that how this was happened and all the leadership of makkah were killed out but next year in 625 ce which is third hijri according to hijri calendar third year they attacked again to madina this is called the war of uhud you will have studied in al imran in detail about it and in that case for some hours companions had this crisis but then this victory happened to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the infidels all have to go back to makka then in fifth hijri at that time here they conducted a big military and in different tribes and they attacked to madina this is the war of trench so as i have explained you that the soldiers of infidels were 30000 soldiers and the companions soldiers were only 3000 persons so at that time when this information came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he planning to manage this war so at that time a companion salman farsi radhiyallahu anhu he suggested to the prophet that we should just conduct this trench so it will be easy for you because it will be very easy to manage this big soldier so you can see here the trench will be like this this is just an a sample right now it is not available but this is a trench of in a it will be like this and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he conducted this trench over the city so you can see the map of this madina city and also see that around this travel from makka they came around at that time journey of these 450 kilometers were taken at around 8 days so from makka and from other tribes people came and before this time of 8 days the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and companions they just conducted this trench so you can now see 
the situation was that the tribal military was 30000 in different locations and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his military was 3000 in different but inside this trench jews fort was still available but jews had an agreement between the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and jews agreed that everyone will live independently but in case of a war all will help each other this was the agreement so here very interested for you that for salman farsi radhiyallahu anhu who was his bibliography if you study he was he was actually born in iran and he his faith was zoroastrian but he when he became young at that time he did not understood the faith so when he saw christianity so he agreed and he just go to syria and with christian scholars he studied it and these christian scholars were following exactly according to the prophet jesus alaihi salam at the death of his teacher explained that right now in christians you will find very rare persons who follow according to prophet jesus alaihi salam but it is expecting that the last prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he will appear at that time it is expectation is there so you should go and he explained that the location in this area of madina so salman farsi radhiyallahu anhu he traveled and he was going to madina but some people just captive them and they he became just a slave person but after some months or years when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came at the same time salman farsi radhiyallahu anhu believed with the prophet and at the same time prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam purchased his slavery and give freedom to salman radhiyallahu anhu so that's why salman radhiyallahu anhu based on his experience he has observed in iran that you should manage through trench so the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam were taking decision making with together way with all the companions so based on that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam accepted his suggestion at this trench was managed so right now if you see in the google you will find this the seven mosques in madina so this was the main point in this because most of the soldiers were trying to attack from this side so in the name of different companions the seven mosques were constructed after some times people have then there but right now in the saudi government has just together all the governments in uh, all the mosques in one mosque right now there you can see it so now in this war what happened to the companions radhiyallahu anhu and how 
these hypocrites conducted this psychological war through false propaganda they did so wa iz yaqulu al munafiquna wal ladina fi qulubihim maradun ma wa'adana Allah wa rasuluhu illa gharura wa iz qala ta'ifatun minhum ya ahla yasriba la muqam lakum farji'u wa yasta'zinu fariqun minhum nabiyya yaquluna inna buyutana awratun wa ma hiya bi awratin in in yuriduna illa firara walau dukhilat alayhim min aqtariha summa su'ilul fitnata la la atawha wa ma talabbasu biha illa yasira when the hypocrites whose hearts were afflicted with an ailment which was a psychological ailment the promises made with us by god and his prophet were just deception when one of their group said people of yasrib yasrib was the old name of this city yasrib which is right now madina there is now no chance for you to stay so turn back and one of their groups was seeking permission from the prophet it would say our homes are in danger although they were not in danger they only wanted to get rid of it if they had been attacked from around their homes then invited to wrong doing they would have fallen into it and very few of them would have stopped from this so right now you can see the attitude of these hypocrites because hypocrites were some political movement and they wanted that instead of the prophet they wanted to control the government they wanted it so that's why they used this propaganda and they wanted to get rid of this military of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they did so and their objective was just to moral just to kick all the companions out of it they tried it so god has explained their scenario why for us it is that in such scenarios how we should manage such crisis how we should manage with this false propaganda how we should manage now you can see that non muslims members have same political and cultural rights as muslims this was the agreement between which is called the constitution of madina when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all the non muslims had this signature of these things that everyone will be independent and they have autonomy and freedom of religion of every person non muslims take up arms against the enemy of the nation and share the cost of war this was the objective of non muslims that if in case of a war then they will help in security you can see this link these links you can study further that in this agreement of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with muslims and non muslims every one of them signed at this agreement non muslims were not obliged to take part in the muslims religious wars for any muslims war non muslims will not help them but if some war A, a, any attack came in madina then muslims and non muslims had agreement for security this was the agreement 
so this was the scenario but hypocrites were just wanted his their freedom uh, sorry their they wanted to control the government that's why they conducted this propaganda and god explained that how they are damaging the morale of faithful muslims how they are doing it now explained the psychology of these hypocrites how they happened and also explained to the faithful muslims companions and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how you should manage them wa laqad kanu ahadullah min qablu la yuwalluna al-adbar wa kana ahadullah mas'ula qul lan yanfa'akum al-firar in qarartum min al-maut aw al-qatl wa izalla tumattauna illa qalila qul man zalladhi yu'simukum min Allah in arada bikum su'an aw arada bikum rahma wala yajiduna lahum min dunillahi waliyan wala nasira before this they had promised god that they will not run away and promises made with god will be taken in their account prophet inform them if you run away from death or execution then this running away will not be of any benefit to you even if you survive you will only benefit for a few days ask them who is it that will be able to save you from god if he intends to harm you or can stop his mercy if he wants to be merciful to you in reality they shall not find any supporter or helper for themselves against god so god explained to these hypocrites and also for sincere new muslims as well god has explained that if you want to go out to your home even then your death can come to you so how you can manage so it is a guarantee of god that god will help the prophet and companions god will do it so don't ignore the message of god and you should avoid such propaganda you should not accept the propaganda of hypocrites leave it god will help you then further god explain qad ya'lamullahu al-mu'addiqina minkum wal qailina li ikhwanihim halumma ilayna wa la ya'tuna al-ba'sa illa qalila ashihatan ashihatan alaykum fa iza ja'a al-khawf ra'ayt ra'aytahum yanzuruna ilayka taduru a'yunuhum kalladhi yughsha alayhi min al-maut fa iza zahaba al-khawf salaqukum bi alsinatin hidadin ashihatan ala al-khair ulaika lahum ulaika lam yu'minu fa ahbata Allah a'malahum wa kana dhalika ala Allah yaseera Allah knows full well those among you who stop others from this war for his cause and have been saying to their brothers come to us while evading you they too have been taking taking little part in this war thus when the time of danger arrives 
you see them that they are looking towards you as if their eyes are rolling around as if someone has been struck by the un unconsciousness unconsciousness of death then when danger subsides in their greed for wealth they assail you with sharp tongs tongs these people did not accept faith so god was wa- wasted their deeds and this is very easy for god so this was the attitude of hypocrites that hypocrites tried to ge- go back to their homes plus negative propaganda they conducted it similarly at the same time in madina jews tribe banu quraiza exist at that time their fort was there and they conduct they had the agreement with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but right now they were planning to attack the prophet and companions from inside from outside 30000 soldiers came from different tribes and now attack from outside and from the inside this jews tribe was were planning so this was the war of polytheist tribes from outside an agreement with jews for that okay will attack from outside and you attack from the inside and just to crash the prophet and com- companions this was their planning so god has explained and the third party was hypocrites who were conducting negative propaganda this was a psychologically war they were conducting so you can see that this was the scenario with this scenario about the prophet and companions it became a sample of the ideal method they have done so this is the lesson for us so you can see right now you can see the map of madina you can see here this is the life of the mosque of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right now this is available but at that time it was small mosque and the house of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was available there and many other companions were living in this location but when they this construction did for this trench so trench was the red color so outside this tribal military was 30000 and they had different side they tried to attack but companions they just to observe them and any one tried to enter in the trench they killed them for example the biggest soldier he came and at that location companion ali radhiyallahu anhu was managing the security so he started war with this soldier the soldier said that oh don't attack with me because your father is my brother and you know that i am consider as 1000 persons i am equal to single person i can attack them so i don't want to kill you but ali radhiyallahu anhu attacked him and as a result of that this soldier was killed out and many other side they tried but some persons 
tried to enter the trench and they were killed out inside this this banu quraiza fort they were planning to attack the house of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and companions they were planning it was very interested scenario that some jews persons came to the house of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they wanted just to understand that whether some soldiers are there or not in reality soldiers were not available because all the companions were managing security in this trench at that time the aunt of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam safiya radhiyallahu anha she attacked that jews soldiers and killed them and as a result of that all these banu quraiza soldiers did not attack after that time because they thought that a big soldiers are still available there otherwise it was in reality only one lady who had attacked two jews person soldiers out of it so you can think about it the scenario of this one so right now you can see that in google you will find that madina city is very extended a lot but at the time of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was just a small city so from this trench you can see that all the companions their homes are inside this trench then what happened after this attack you can see further yahsabun al ahzab lam yazhabu wa iz yaqtil ahzab yuwaddu law annahum baduna fil a'rabi yasaluna an am am baikum walau kanu fikum ma qatalu illa qalila laqad kana lakum fi rasulillah uswatun hasanatun liman kana yarju allah wal yawm al akhira wa zakara allah katira walamma ra al mu'minun al ahzab qalu hadha ma wa'adana allah wa rasuluhu wa sadaqa allah wa rasuluhu mama zadahum illa imanan wa taslima these hypocrites were thinking that the armies of the enemy have no left as yet if these armies return they will desire to be somewhere in the village with the badus which are the especially who were living these uh, villagers with the villagers and from there keep asking about your news this is better because even if they had been among you they would have taken little part to war people in the prophet of allah was the best example of steadfastness and resolve for you for those who expect to meet god at hereafter and he rem- remember allah in abundance method this situation of the true believers at that time was such that when they observe the armies they cried out this is the same thing which allah and his prophet had promised us and what allah and his prophet said was absolutely true due to their attitude their faith and obedient even more increased here you can see the attitude 
that the hypocrites were thinking just to go to village villages so just to because they wanted to get rid of this war and also they were motivating the faithful companions that they also go out so god explained the attitude of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the best example for you and also god has explained the true believers which were the companions who had long time who were who had conducted training with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam their attitude was excellent so god has explained that in future whenever in your life whenever you get any crisis how your attitude should be similar to the prophet and his true believers the companions how they have done you should take and that way you can see here in arabic this these words al ahzab ahzab this is the name of this sermon because ahzab means that the big soldiers so god has explained sorry that i did not uh, just in arabic so i also now this explain yahsabun al ahzab lam yadhabu wa in yaqtil ahzab yawaddu law annahum badun fi al a'rab yasalun an am baikum ولو كانوا فيكم ما قاتلوا الا قليلا لقد كان لكم في رسول الله اسوه حسنه لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الاخر وذكر الله كثيرا فلما راى الرائل مؤمنون الاحزاب قالوا هذا ما وعدنا الله ورسوله وصدق الله ورسوله وما زادهم الا ايمانا what a slima so translation you have already listened so this is just an example for us that for any crisis how our attitude should follow according to the prophet and his companions then further god explain further scenario min al mu'minina rijalun sadaqu ma ahadu Allah alayhi fa minhum man qada nahbahu wa minhum may yantaziru wa ma baddalu tabdila li yajzi Allah as-sadiqina bis-sidqihim wa yu'azzib al-munafiqina in sha'a aw yatuba alayhi inna allaha kana ghafuran rahima there are those men among the believers also who have fulfilled what they promised with god then there is he among them who has finished their love and he also who is waiting for finishing agreement with god they have not the slightest changed they have done this test was conducted so that allah reward the truthful persons based on truthfulness and punish the hypocrites if he intends based on their intentions allah will show mercy to them if he desires and accept their repentance repentance based on their sincere repent because allah is forgiving and ever merciful so here in case studies god has explained the companions that some companions fulfilled the agreement with god the agreement was the companions with god that we will continuously faith with god for the whole life and we will follow according to the instructions 
of God and the Prophet, they will do it, and they did so. And some of them were martyred. An example at that time, this happened with Saad bin Muaz radiallahu He was the chief of Os tribe of Medina, and during this war, he was managing security at some location. He was injured during to this trench war and he was martyred after some days. At the end of the war, the Prophet ﷺ took police action against the Banu Quraiza fort because they were planning to attack the house of the Prophet and companion. So they, when they were controlled so they requested the Jews that the Prophet Sallallahu that please Saad bin Muaz make him the judge to make the decision because Saad bin Muaz he was the old friend of such Banu Quraiza people they had this sort of an friendship so that's why these Banu Quraiza requested uh, 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 that please Saad bin Muaz must be the judge and we will agree with him. So the Prophet accepted the request of Jews and asked Saad bin Muaz to conduct the war court. And Saad made a decision as a result of that and after some days he was martyred so let me explain what happened to what was his Saad Radilatanu what is happened that during this war judge what was his decision he made a decision based on Parath because which was which is the book which Jews follow according to it and According to Torah, which is Deuteronomy, right now the fifth book of the Bible, you will see it. That Saad Radilatano take an action that although it was a violation against agreement between Jews and Muslims, their civilians became prisoners, but their attitude became logical after some time and they get freedom after some times but their soldiers all of them were killed out according to this Torah you will study in the Bible you will find it many ladies men and children who were civilians so did not so the prophet did not give any punishment to them but they came captives for some times but the Prophet Sallallahu explained to them and you will find that many ladies and children they believed examples of their name are like Rehana Atiyah al Quraziyah, Abdullah Muhammad and Rufa radiallahu all of them companions and Rihana radiallahu she married with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and they all of them were very sincere persons you can see their scenario so now at the last you will see that in this trench war, further God has explained, وَرَدَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِغَيْزِهِمْ لَمْ يَنَالُوا خَيْرًا وَكَفَ اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الْقِطَالِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ قَوِيًّا عَزِيزًا وَانْزَلَ الَّذِينَ ظَاهَرُوهُمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ مِنْ صَيَاسِيهِمْ وَقَذَفَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمُ الرُّعْبَ فَرِيقًا تقتلون وَتَأْسِرُونَ فَرِيقًا وَأَوْرَثَكُمْ أَرْضَهُمْ 
و دیا رہ و اموال ہوں و اردلم ستاؤ وکان اللہ علیہ کل شہین قبیرا اللہ میر دا ڈس بلیورس ٹرن بیک ان ایبسلوٹ فیلئر ود اینگر ان دیئر ہارٹس آن دا ادر ہینڈ اللہ از سفیشینٹ ٹو ہیلپ مسلمس ان اوار بیکاز گاڈ از ایکسٹریملی اسٹرانگ اینڈ پاورفل دوز امنگ دا پیپل آف دا بک ہو ہیڈ ہیلپ دا پولیتھسٹس ڈیورنگ وار گاڈ سینٹ ڈاؤن دوز مسلمس ہو اپیئرڈ فرام دیئر اسٹرانگ ہولڈس دے اسٹرک ٹیرر ان دیئر ہارٹس سچ دیٹ یو ور کلنگ ون آف دیئر سیکشنس اینڈ ام پریزنگ دا ادرس گاڈ میڈ یو دا ان ہیریٹرس آف دیئر لینڈس دیئر ہاؤسز اینڈ ویلتھ پلس دیٹ لینڈ which after some time Khaybar and Palestine it will happen also which you have not yet entered in reality Allah has power over everything so God has explained about the future and after some year this Khaybar and Palestine all of them victory happened to the companions so this was the punishment God has given because according to Torah as Saad bin Muaz radiyallahu made the decision based on Torah so then Jews did not able to disagree with them because it was according to the book Torah they believed already so there is no issue so you will see that after some times this was the promise of faithful companions You can see in the history of Prophet Musa al-Islam that at the time of Prophet David and Suleiman al-Islam, God gave them victory in this Palestine area. And for the Prophet Muhammad s.a.w. got this victory to the companions. You can observe that this happened from this Tajikistan to Morocco. They get it, victory. And the next generation, they also give victory to the Spain as well. So you can see that this was the victory. As a result of that, which was God has given here, the future God has explained before. So it is, this sentence is an evidence that this was the real book of God so that such was happened in reality you can see it so you can observe this one so now our lecture finish this one in the next lecture we will see that how this crisis happened to the family of the prophet and companions to them as well during this period and then God will finish this prophethood after some time so we will study in the next lectures so whatever questions feel free to send to me thanks a lot wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh